YouTube, it's your boy Dom's reacts back with another video. They were reacting to rappers who destroyed their career with one mistake. Basically, rappers who canceled themselves. Please try to like, comment, subscribe, share the video, roll 300 subscribers. I've been away for a little minute, but your boy Dom's is back. I feel like I said that last time, but I had a lot of personal things going on in my life. You know, life happens. And I, and I, did, and I didn't want to give you guys a disservice and forced content when my heart wasn't in it. But... We back. Rappers who destroyed their career with one mistake. A successful rap career is extremely hard to obtain, yet very easy to destroy. One mistake, one bad album, one tweet could start a ripple effect that leads a rapper to fade into Facts. irrelevance. Today we are going to look at the stories of rappers whose careers dwindled for reasons they likely could have prevented. Starting with Superstar Pride, a rapper who had the fastest and most ironic rise and fall of all time. Many of you heard Superstar Pride briefly in 2023 when his song Painting Pictures went viral. However, it wasn't necessarily viral for the song, but rather his obscure mullet-style haircut. The crazy part about this track is that it was originally uploaded in 2020 and went unnoticed. Hey mama, don't worry, you raised the then two years later, when he uploaded the live mic performance video to Painting Pictures, it also fell on deaf ears. It wasn't until five months after the music video dropped, February of 2023, that Pride casually created a TikTok, posted the music video snippet, and it blew up. The first clip he- I ain't gonna lie, TikTok? For music, if you if you're trying to get into music, get yourself out there on TikTok. I mean, granted, you might be a one-hit wonder, but hey. Posted got 10 million views. The second one did over 40 million views. Bro got the Sonic haircut. Bro looked like he got screamed at. Bro's haircut was 50% off. Nobody was talking about the song. Damn, just his hair. The then a viral suck, trend though. emerged of people imitating his video with something ridiculous taped to the back of their head, which could not be outdone when someone managed to get an entire airplane strapped to their head. The opening line, Mama Don't Worry, was also getting stuck in people's heads, which led to the song amassing 160 million streams on Spotify and over 30 Fire. million on YouTube. Painting pictures shot up to number 25 on the Billboard Hot 100, Not and every major it. label got into a bidding war trying to sign him, but he sided with Steve Stout and his independent structured music label, United Masters. And he wanted like $5 million from a label. And when they didn't give him $5 million, they offered him three. Mm. He Bruh, at some point you just gotta take, you just gotta be humble and take that three million. It's just, what's the difference like, this is coming from somebody that I hadn't touched a million yet. What's the difference between three million and five million anyway? Just the fact that, oh, I'm worth three million or I'm worth five. You're still a millionaire nonetheless. That's how I see it. Like, if it ain't five, I'm not signing it. Bro, you could have <laughs> like, taken that what? $2 million. Pride let his ego get the best of him, refusing $3 million for wanting $5 million. Three weeks after refusing the record deal, he was arrested for murder. A Mississippi rapper is charged with murder in Panola County. 20-year-old Kadarius Pride, That's known a turn as Superstar I Pride. The victim, Marcus Wheatley, was Pride's barber, likely responsible for his signature hairstyle. Wheatley's grandmother said Pride stormed into their house and gunned him down in the backyard. Currently, Pride is being held without bond and doesn't have a trial set. Nobody knows what happened or why it happened. But that a rapper a going viral for his ridiculous haircut in February... I thought the label the was going to be the reason, like, the whole label situation was going to be... the because people was going to see that he had an ego or something. But that took a turn that I did not see coming. Wheatley murdering his barber a few months later after denying $3 million is the most insane self-sabotage I have ever seen. And if you thought Pride's story was a poetically ironic form of self-sabotage, meet Chance the Rapper, who once famously said, I met Kanye West, I am never going to fail, <laughs> I still listen but to that still song managed to, to fail. Day. Chance the Rapper. Rap but what, on the real, what did cause... I know that song is not what caused his fall off, but what exactly caused his fall off? The fact that he became a family man? Rap, the rap community hate families that much? His 2013 mixtape, Acid Rap, was universally praised by hip-hop fans. His raspy voice and sprinkle of soul combined with his youthful, positive energy made this project a masterpiece. Tracks like Cocoa Butter Kisses and Favorite Song have aged like fine wine. But Chance was in no rush to capitalize on his buzz. He worked on his next mixtape for three years. He had the whole city of Chicago rooting for him and garnered support from the biggest artists in the world, including Kanye West, who featured Chance on his 2016 album, The Life of Pablo. 
glow. Chance's part on Ultralight Beam is one of the biggest highlights of the project. Yes, Coloring Book like was his, his 2016 mixtape that served as the perfect follow-up to Acid Rap. Chance's cadence, soulful lyrics, and euphoric beat selection was unlike anyone else in hip-hop at the time, especially on tracks No Problem and All We Got. He earned a Grammy for Best New Artist, and some people even believed he could give Drake a run for his money. I relax now, it. buddy. And I'm gonna and I'm blow you away when you hear stand. about today's sponsor. Lately, I've been obsessed with fantasy sports. And that's where today's sponsor comes in, Underdog Fantasy. Shout Underdog, Underdog is the Underdog. easiest way to play fantasy sports. We, we for me, so here. rep your team and make your picks with Underdog. Starting with a track called Groceries, a corny TikTok song that was heavily marketed on Triller to capitalize on the whoa dance craze. The song went viral, but when fans criticized it on Twitter, his responses would put a nasty stain on his reputation. People have different tastes and that's fine, but the way you're talking to fans who have been with you since 10 days is disappointing, and that ego reflects on the quality of your newest music. Eat it. You are a spoiled wow. child who thinks artists are making music for you. I never intended for you to find or like anything I made. If I knew you existed, See, I would. As a celebrity, it's, it's, it's never really good to go back at criticism. Like, I kind of, like when KD does it and different artists like or athletes, they go, go back at the fans after the, they clap back at the fans. It kind of, it kind of shows that they're an everyday person. Which that's why I respect it, but most people, it it's it's not a it's a lose lose situation no matter how you come back at the fan because if you say respect the criticism, obviously they're gonna be like oh obviously it got to them or if or if you clap back at the person oh I don't know why they're so mad. So either way, it's a lose lose situation for going back at. Tried my hardest to keep you from being. And able then sometimes to enjoy the critics be having fair criticism. Again, then Chance over and over again told the fan to eat a dick. This interaction was a far cry from the positive and wholesome Chance the Rapper fans loved. Hmm. Then he dropped his debut album, The Big Day, on July 26, 2019. The Big Day was a reference to his wedding day, which he was planning during the creation of this album. Chance mentions his wife and family over 20 about times to say, on the record, <laughs> which became a huge meme. And while his intentions were pure, really the album that simply family man was not good. I am genuinely feeling like a strong zero on this record. Fans hated the project as well, Goodness and were Christ. quick to let him know. On Twitter, Chance would block anyone who poked fun at him or said anything negative about yeah, the album. With the influx of hate, he responded with extreme measures. I'm getting this crazy feeling that people want me to end it. These desperate tweets combined with his lazy album would lead to him canceling his 32 city Man, arena to tour, saying that he was instead going to focus album. on spending time with his family. Which again sounds understandable, but it was a lie. The tour was actually cancelled due to quote, historically low ticket sales. According to his now ex-manager Pat Corcoran, Chance fired his manager then blamed him for fan disappointment in the big day and underwhelming fan support for its associated tour. Corcoran would go on to file a lawsuit in November of 2020 against Chance the Rapper for breach of contract, stating that he is owed over $2.5 million in reimbursed expenses for supporting and promoting Chance's career, an additional $3 million for unpaid commissions, and 15% of Chance Chance's net profit across all business earnings. The lawsuit also revealed that Chance started working on his album in February of 2019, which was only five months before it was released. His manager knew there was not enough time for the creative process that was involved in releasing an album. Chance's recording efforts were compromised by unproductive and undisciplined studio sessions, procrastination, and lackadaisical effort, which explains why there are terrible lyrics throughout this record. If you blink it, you might miss it. You gotta click it or tick it. Life is short as a midget, but mine's a little LeBron and how could we forget peanut butter jelly with a baseball bat peanut butter jelly with a peanut butter jelly y'all ain't ready for the jelly it'll break y'all back Chance let his own ego squander his career. He couldn't just admit that he made his fans wait three years for a bad album that was rushed out in five months, and the way he responded to them on Twitter was just childish. From here, all his hype died. See, if, if, you, if he was gonna respond, if anything, he could have said, I'm sorry for rushing an album. But I guess he wanted to have something come out around the time of his big day. Hence the name Big Day. But he still should have apologized, if anything, apologized for having a a bad album. Rather than trying to clap back at people on Twitter. 
panned. If he stepped out of the limelight to genuinely focus on his family, that's respectable. Maybe that's something we should celebrate rather than see as a downfall. But Chance wasn't the only rapper whose Twitter fingers started their downfall. In the case of OG Mako, he pretty much forced everyone to hate him because of his tweets. In 2014, OG Mako had a ton of momentum after his song You Guessed It when- I only know two songs by him, You Guessed It and F him. Are all Those fine. Are... This track was unlike anything we had ever well, heard at the time. No, no. Before Those Mumble Rap took, took over, head, we yeah. had OG Mako screaming insane ad-libs over the most simplistic, hard-hitting trap beat. <laughs> he had a darker, more rock-like aesthetic and even called himself not a rapper, but a rock star. The song reached number 90 on the Billboard Hot 100 and Dang, he could even be credited with inspiring many rappers after him. It definitely inspired Keith Ape, who just released a track called It G Ma that sounded suspiciously similar. Just listen to them at the same time. OG Mako tweeted, I'm aware of the Koreans that mocked me and took my sauce. I'm not impressed. I'm not inspired. I think it's kind of lame. To each his own. Mako even accused Beyonce of stealing from him and her 7-Eleven music. What? Movie. If you look at them side by side, he may have a point. But Mako was developing a reputation of a bitter, egotistical rapper who complained. This is like, uh, excuse the basketball reference, but... He's like the short midget Isaiah Thomas of rap. Like every time, every time somebody, a point guard in the NBA messes up, but they're still in the league though, and I'm not. OG Mako, any, he finds anything like his hair is blonde right here. The rapper dyes their hair blonde, but they got that from me. He, he's one of them. He randomly on, took man. shots at his collaborators and label mates, the Migos. Mako felt the need to tell everyone that Skippa to Flippa invented the dab dance that the Migos were using in the song Pipe It Up, to which the Migos replied, The Flippa man is Migo family. OG Mako, let's see you set a trend. And Mako said, Half the rap game has already bit one of my flows or ad libs. Let me see them album sales. Meanwhile, OG Mako has never had a gold album, let alone the. I'm about to say, let's album. not talk album sales versus the Migos. OG Mackle, you you of all people can't go album sale for album sale with the Migos. Come on now. It's the Migos have. Then he went after Lil Uzi when Double XL tweeted, "Lil Uzi is rap's newest rock star." Oh, he, God. he I I was I caught myself a rock star first. Oh my God. Did dudes don't just become rock stars? Somebody got to show you the way. Stop playing with my name. With a picture of Uzi at the Mako a bigger Mako career show now. on stage behind I, him. Then would you rather have? You paved, yeah, exactly. You paved the way for Uzi. That's what you say, OG Mackle. But either way, would y'all rather have OG Mackle's career or a little Uzi's career? Come on. I mean, I get if you if you just want to get the money and dip, I can see why you would say OG Mackle. But Uzi has proven himself throughout the years. Academic said, you paved the way for Uzi? And then Mako replied jealous. with dozens of tweets over the next hour trying to explain why he is so influential and Uzi was stealing his sauce. He also randomly took shots at Future. Sure, I love Future, right. but I also understand Future has destroyed countless lives by making it cool to be a drug addict. People looking up to loser attitudes now, because this generation is afraid to strike. Now I could see what he was saying about the the whole drug thing with Future, and because people talk about the Lil Wayne era of I I can I can understand that. That's a fair criticism, but to say that everybody's biting your flow is kind of crazy to me. Because rap. Everybody's influenced by somebody, just about. Like, like Kanye influenced so many people. Kanye probably was influenced by someone, and it, and it keeps going. the The modern day drill era was, I think, was inspired by the Chicago drill era of Chief Keef and all of. Or anything. It's y'all's fault all this lame ass shit is possible. Again, he may have a point here, but fans replied to Mako calling him a hypocrite since he raps about the same stuff. But Mako claimed he was dumbing down his music to blow up. You guessed it was not luck. It wasn't an accident. I made the dumbest song I possibly could on a beat full of bass and knew it would blow. I manipulated- Maybe, maybe, but because even like a lot of rappers say that they played into the what was trendy to blow up because like I seen ASAP Rocky drink champs he was talking about effing problems and how he hated that song because he was playing into too much into the mainstream but everybody loved that song so maybe you guessed it maybe he was going for the viral one hit but 
wrong messenger. For 40 million minds and counting based on the exact same principles that I'm preaching. Who's more qualified to say this? Now Mako has always made more conscious, focused music with substantial lyrics. Like Jason, Michael, Freddy, and Idiot mean after your civil Dang, I didn't know that. I didn't know that he made like sub music of substance, but when you came out with those two hits, F on man, you guessed it. That kind of people gonna know you more so for that than your conscious music. It, it, it's it's the world that we live in. Negativity sells. Like if 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 you if I react to a beef or I get into beef, people gonna care more about that than dimes helps the homeless. Been I mean, Mr. But a Beast lot of his music was just mediocre, boring trap. Get the cat, get the cat, get the bag, get the bag. Ay, get the cat, get the cat. Also, if he claims to be such a genius, why wasn't he able to do it again? During his brief moment of popularity, Mako consistently released music on SoundCloud, but nothing sounded anywhere near as innovative, fun, or interesting as you guessed it. His downfall was easily due to dissing rappers for absolutely no reason, nonstop yeah, complaining he... on Twitter, and trying so hard. Instead of well, instead of like coming at people, why didn't why didn't he just try to connect with these people? It, it's gonna get you a lot of a, beef, and that's the one thing about beef too. It's gonna get you a lot of attention in the moment, but once it all said and done, especially if you were wrong, people not gonna care about you no more. You are gonna fade out of existence. Take credit for the success of anyone else. Was he an innovator? Absolutely. But he spent too much time talking about how influential he was on Twitter rather than trying to create a legacy to maintain his career. But what happens when the reason a rapper blows up is the same exact reason why they had a downfall? On July 26th, 2016, just a few weeks after his 16th birthday, SoundCloud rapper TK and five others conspired to rob a 17-year-old drug dealer, Zachary Belote. The crew broke into the house around 10 p.m. and the robbery went wrong which led to the drug dealer's friend and roommate Ethan Walker being fatally shot. TK admitted during the police interrogation that he was not the shooter but was there looking for drugs and money. He had been released from custody pending the trial and was placed on house arrest with an ankle monitor. For the next seven months TK sat in his room making music, releasing it on SoundCloud, and built up a following. With no money for a lawyer and quickly approaching the hearing for the murder, TK infamously tweeted that he was tired of house arrest and the police were going to have to hunt him down. While on the run from the police, TK was very active on social media. Fans posted pictures and videos of him in public. But TK and his friends were desperate for money. He robbed a 65-year-old man named Skip Pepe at gunpoint in Arlington's Craven Park. He then attempted to rob a cameraman named Mark Anthony Saldivar in a Chick-fil-A parking lot. Mark began screaming for help as he tried to escape. Then TK hit him with the car before getting out, fatally shooting him and driving off. San Antonio police connected TK to the murder due to surveillance footage and posted wanted signs around the city. TK saw this as a marketing opportunity, wow. posting pictures and videos with the wanted sign. He then dropped a song called The Race on SoundCloud, which essentially told the story of him being a future. Yeah, and and like, after, I know that the, these lyrics was used against him, but I know this is always, after this situation, it always became a controversial thing of should your lyrics be used as, against you as evidence before court? And a lot of people, I get both sides of the argument. It's just entertainment. And then a lot of rappers don't live that life. But obviously in TK's case, he was rapping about things he was actually doing. So that's a tricky thing for me robbing and killing people while on the run from the police. After filming and releasing the music video to the race, TK was captured by U.S. Marshals in Elizabeth, New Jersey. The shockingly true story led to the 17-year-old exploding in virality. The race secured hundreds of millions of views on YouTube, reached number 44 on the Billboard Hot 100, and hashtag Free TK became a movement supported by some of the biggest rappers in the game. He even signed a $700,000 record deal, but none of it mattered because he was behind bars. And in 2019, he, he was given a 55-year sentence after being found guilty of murder and three counts of aggravated robbery. Obviously, TK's downfall could have Wait, been how many years? murder, and in 2019, he was given a 55-year sentence after being found... Okay. So, how old is TK not, like, uh... TK is 23 years old. So... 
Wow. This man is basically going to spend the rest of his life locked up. Sheesh. Guilty of murder and three counts of aggravated robbery. Obviously, Teike's downfall could have been prevented if he simply did not commit these heinous acts. But as bad as it sounds, none of us would even know about I'm about to say, that's, rob and murder. That's the, that's the truth of the whole situation. Like, if Teike made the music, but none of what he was saying was true, he wouldn't have blew up. And that's the part that's crazy about all of this. Like, when people find out the race was something, he was rapping something he was actually doing. That's what made the song blow up. People mm. then make songs about it while mocking the police on the run from the law. Rap fans glamorize this type of behavior because the music is, a lot of the time, violent and derogatory. So if you're going to rap about it, fans want you to be about it. But the fans won't be the ones sitting in the jail Facts. cell. Pusheisty is an example of someone who was heavily rewarded for his violent music. His song Back in Blood featuring Lil Durk was essentially a song about killing your enemies. This track would reach number 37 on the Billboard Hot 100 and secured himself as a promising new talent talent in hip-hop, but at this peak of his new career, he got arrested. Pooh Shiesty and his crew were at the King of Diamonds strip club in Miami, Florida. Allegedly, Shiesty had money taken from him which led to major commotion in the club. Security acted accordingly and escorted Pooh Shiesty out of the club, but he forced his way back into the club and, accidentally, fired a handgun at a working security guard. Pooh Shiesty turned himself in on June 8, 2021 and had his hearing the following day, where he would be denied bond. He would later be sentenced to five years and three months in prison on April 20th, 2022. He could have easily just left the club and let others go handle the money situation, but maybe he felt the need to live up to his back in blood lyrics. I got my own fire, don't need security in the club. If you haven't noticed, rappers and shootings seem to be a very common trend that leads to their downfall. Tory Lanez is no different. However, many people still question yeah, if he is actually guilty of being the shooter. In 2020, Tory Lanez was at the peak of his career. His feature on Jack Harlow's What's Poppin' reached number two on the Billboard Hot 100 while objectively being the best verse. His album, The New Toronto 3, debuted at number two on the Billboard 200. He broke the record for the most live viewers in an Instagram Live during his quarantine radio show during the pandemic. However, on July 12th, 2020, he was arrested on a felony gun charge while out with Megan Thee Stallion after attending a small party at Kylie Jenner's house. The public was also informed that Megan had cut her foot on broken glass. Then three days later, she changed her story to say that she was shot in the foot. Then one month later, she said this. Yes, this nigga Tory shot me. You shot me. And you got your publicists and your people going to these blogs lying and Stop lying. Social media immediately took Megan's side. Tory remained silent about the allegations, but responded with lyrics on his album, Daystar. How the fuck you get shot in your foot and don't hit no bones or tendons? How the fuck your team is trying to paint me as a whole menace? Delusional, like how that 1942 from Kylie House still got you talking crazy. As well as also rapping about why he hasn't been nearly as vocal as Meg. Think I'm finna talk about an open case for some likes? Tory Lanez was charged with one count of assault with a semi-automatic firearm and one count of carrying a loaded, unregistered firearm in October of 2020. Although Tory claimed he was being blackballed by the music industry, his career continued to thrive. He released four albums independently, which would all garner hundreds of millions of streams. He received I'm praise- I'm about to say, the albums got, got his streams, but wasn't like, didn't you have to like go out your way to search for it? Like it wasn't being pushed out. And then like, another thing too is, um, people like, that's crazy. LeBron was being open about it. I was just trying to say people was not about to be. People wasn't like openly openly saying they was listening to Tory, but LeBron was. So I guess that defeats my whole point. Of LeBron James, as well as dozens of other mainstream acts, fans believed if it wasn't for this case, he would have been toe to toe with the biggest rappers in the game. But once we finally got uh, the information from this trial, know, really. we would end up with more questions than answers. On July 12, 2020, Tory Lanez, his bodyguard, Megan Thee Stallion, and her friend Kelsey Harris were attending a small gathering at Kylie Jenner's house. Megan testified that she lied to the police about the glass, lied to doctors, and basically lied about the entire situation out of fear. Her new story was pretty simple. She said that they had an argument, she exited the car, Tory leaned out of the passenger side door, said, 
dance bitch and shot her from 25 feet away in the back of the foot. Then Tori ran up to her apologizing and she got back into the car so they could give her a ride home. The cops arrived when the neighbors reported the gunshots. Tori chose not to testify and defend himself, which he would later regret. Kelsey, Meg's friend, testified that Tori was trying to hook up with Kylie Jenner and Meg tried to convince him to leave the house. Meg was upset that Tori didn't want to leave, so she got into the car with Kelsey and drove almost all the way home before realizing she forgot her slipper and went back to Kylie's. They grabbed Tori the second time after Kylie allegedly told them to leave. In the car is when Tori admitted that he and Megan had been in a romantic relationship. Kelsey was shocked because Megan was the one who hooked up Tori and Kelsey in the first place. Kelsey also admitted that this was not the first time Meg had backdoored her when it came to men. Now we have a love triangle and this is how the argument started. But Kelsey pleaded the fifth when it came to speaking about anything regarding the gun or shooting. The government offered her immunity, so she couldn't be charged with any crime even if she admitted to it. She still refused to speak. There was one witness, Sean Kelly, who saw the altercation from his balcony after being awoken by the arguing. Sean said he witnessed Kelsey get out from the back seat, open the front passenger door, and start physically fighting Megan in the front seat. He also said that the muzzle flash from the gun was closest to Kelsey. Much of his testimony was ignored because he couldn't identify the people by name since it was dark. He only said big man, small man, and two women. Nobody admitted to hearing the words dance bitch besides Megan. There was gunshot residue on Kelsey's hands and Tori's hands. Also after this night, Kelsey and Megan stopped being friends after being best friends for seven years. When Tori was initially jailed, he called Kelsey and apologized multiple times to her. I know she's probably never ever gonna talk to me ever again, but bruh, I just want you to know. I was just so drunk. I don't even know what was going on. I'd never do some shit like that. Regardless, that's not gonna make anything right and that's not gonna make my actions right. But I'm deeply sorry for that. I never even move like that at all. People speculated Tori was apologizing for sleeping with both of the women and causing chaos. Others see this as an obvious admission of shooting the gun. Some people think it was Kelsey who was angry and shot me. We never will. That's the sucky part of this case is that even after the verdict was given out like most most people was like oh when when we get the verdict that's when i'll believe what happened we got the verdict people still argue about it to this day it, it sucks that we probably probably never get the clarity on the whole situation the true clarity on the whole situation but yeah these are rappers that destroyed their careers with one mistakes what about macklemore what about Macklemore? Like he basically canceled himself too by with the whole Kendrick Lamar thing. That was another person that came to mind that I felt like was missing from this. But no, couldn't. I feel like I feel like we see we hear about that situation so much in videos that he probably didn't want to make a segment on that. But I so I get it. But anyway, I'm out. Peace.